Hi guys, welcome again to Cliff Harvey RC Planes. Um, I had an interesting comment uh, from one of my subscribers who wanted to know about um, how I put the battery, uh, mounted the battery in my SE5 Micro Aces. So I thought I'd do um, a short video on the battery installations in my Micro Aces models. So I'll start with the SE5. Okay, starting with a little explanation. My original battery set uh, for the Micro Aces models were the little 160 milliamp hour batteries. Uh, perfectly good batteries, give you quite a few minutes flying time. Uh, but my latest selection of batteries is the, again, Turnergy, exactly the same make. Nanotech 200 milliamp hour batteries. Now, as you can see there, put them equal. They're quite a bit longer for that extra 40 milliamp hours, but it gives you obviously a three or four minutes more in the air. I've also got little tiny 100 milliamp hour batteries, especially for the DH2. Uh, they're quite a bit smaller than the 160s, but they still give you a few minutes in the air. Now you might notice something on my batteries. I paint, in this case yellow, on the flat side of the battery. This tells me they belong to me, if I should lend them to somebody. And... Uh, Gives me a clue as to which way up they go in the charger and to a lesser degree which way up they go in the aeroplane. Okay, as I was saying, let's start off with the SC5. Now, originally the lead came out under, let me give you a little pointer. So a little pointer, just use the end of this. Originally, the lead came out under the rear mounted magnet. You've got two magnets at the front and one at the back. Well, I've taken the back one out because... Well, let, now let me start earlier, actually. You pull the lead out and connect the battery on. Perfectly functional way of doing it. But I wanted to be able to just open the hatch plug the battery in and put the hatch back on. That worked really well until I bought the bigger batteries. And all of a sudden they're sticking out too far in front of the uh, hatch location. So I had to remove the rear magnet to make room for the end of the battery so I could plug the battery in push it all the way back inside and now the front of the battery is in the correct location for the hatch just to slide on and clip it oops propeller in the way and clip in um, the problem with now is the back of the hatch sits slightly up now I could probably Think of a way to retain that, but to be honest, it really isn't worth it. You don't notice that as it flies past. So, that's, that's what I do in the SE5A. Now, I could, well, I, no, I really couldn't. I can't fasten, there's nowhere to fasten. The connector now at the back of the battery so but I've got quite a long lead on this one so it's not a problem pulling it forward and getting a good hand grip on it pulling it off that's the SE5A but I've got a little trick I use on the Fokker D7 let me show you that one next which I may have to consider doing on this one one day swap planes. The 
Fokker D7 started off life exactly the same as, uh, way as the SE5 magnet. Pop the magnets on the front and the magnet at the back. The Fokker D7, very similar originally the 160 milliamp hour battery sat in the front because the, the the front nose of the battery we'll call it actually sits in a little slot inside of the uh, cowling hatch so it, it comes quite a long way forward but by the same token there wasn't enough room for the 200 milliamp hour battery so it has to go through uh, a hole at the back now the hole at the back of the d7 uh, I was able to keep the magnet, oops, keep the magnet, but the lead, battery lead, uh, once you clip it onto the battery, has to actually go, has to actually poke all the way through inside the fuselage so now as you can see the actual connector has disappeared inside the fuselage if it gets caught up on something and I pull the battery out then I've got to start getting tweezers out and trying to fish out the connector so I've fitted on a piece of string I'll pull it now deliberately so as the battery is disconnected, but I've got a piece of string here tied onto the connector so I can pull it back through. Okay, so there's a little tip for you. Tie a little bit of string on and you won't have any problems. As you're looking at this one, look, you see I've had to add quite a bit of lead to the nose of this one. I've got a little bit this side, a little bit on the port side, none in the cowling because don't forget the bigger battery takes the central gravity further back because the battery is far forward as it can go anyway so there's a little exhaust pipe hangs down on that side which goes on the outside of the of the hatch of the fuselage I should say in the, under the machine guns if you don't get it right first time a bit fiddly but if you do get it right it just clips in with a little magnetic clunk let me put it back and get out another model this one incidentally is one of my old stalwarts I fly it a lot because it's tough as old boots it's quite it was one of the easier models to build because it's got the only rigging it's got is on the undercarriage so, it, you know, it, um, it's just a solid, solid model. Anyway, let's put it back up. Mm. I've got the new port 17 down. The new port 17 is different insofar as, of course, the model is a rotary engine as opposed to the inline engines of the two models I've just showed you. Now, oh, by the way, did I say on that model, on both of those originally, when I had the 160 battery in, the socket for the battery was actually hot glued into the into the rear former so as I could just plug it in and out without having to fiddle with the cable but now I've got the bigger battery in that's why it has to be through a hole in the back now the rotary engine models are a little bit different because you can't I've got a machine gun here just let me put a block of wood down so I don't squash it because you can't get a battery in due to the length of the let's get a pair of tweezers uh, due 
due to the length of the socket for the battery you can't quite this this battery by the way is better um, handled from behind the wire for the undercarriage um, I run a 160 in this one because there isn't really enough room for 200 the sharp eyed amongst you will notice I've actually got the swage lines of the cowl on the bottom instead of the top yes the cowl's upside down now I must explain that I try to uh, make life easy for myself making the hole at the back here a little bit bigger so as I could just slide the battery in uh, which kind of worked but in doing so with the Dremel I accidentally cut out a chunk out the bottom of the cowl it's not noticed but it does affect things now I can push that battery in like this and then I have to winkle it forward a little bit it's a bit of a fag See, it, 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 it would go under the cowl, but because I've taken that piece of cowl out, I suppose I could glue something back in. There's nothing to keep it from dropping out. I can't push it too far back because it's going to alter the centre of gravity. So I've got to actually take the cowl off, let the battery drop forward a little bit, and tuck it up into the cowl and then clip, um, put the cowl back on. Okay, so the battery sort of sink, sinks quite crudely like that. So the moral of the story is don't muck about with John John's designs. They actually work quite well as they are. So let's just pop that off. Disconnect that. We'll probably get a, a 200 in that, um, to be honest. Have a go, shall we? It's a long battery. And don't forget, it'll affect the central gravity because you're putting a lot more weight further back. The back of the battery is hitting the bulkhead, so it's not going to work. So stick with the 160s there. So let's just pop this one back. Lovely fly, this new Newport 17, by the way. A little tip for you guys as well. If you're struggling to get your cowl on and off, you can always file the holes in the back slightly bigger to get the hooks to go in easily. And then it'll just clip in. Okay, that's the Newport 17. The Sopwith triplane. Again, rotary engine, get your battery, plug it in, inside the um, fuse lines, right at the top there's a little area where the battery can sit, so Plop it down inside there like that. And it just sits in there like that. Okay. Then turn your cowling in, turn it on, turn it back up and you're ready to go. When it comes to removing it, turn it upside down, turn the cowl. I use a pair of tweezers just to reach in there. You can't use a 200 milliamp hour in this one unless you modify inside the fuselage at the back like I did with the SC5 or Fokker D7. But to be honest, the 160s give you loads of flight time, so I wouldn't worry. So that's the sort of triplane. Beautiful flyer. The sort of camel. I have the limited edition camel because of the spectacular colour scheme. This is the Rushton Camel. It's 
So to get the battery on on this one, I've got a 160 amp hour battery. I've got quite a little bit of an extension lead on this to make it slightly easier. Push it in, lay in on the top of the battery hatch, make sure it's tucked in. You don't notice it hanging down slightly as it flies, but it keeps the centre of gravity as far forward as possible. Okay, so let's pop that one off again. There it goes. Alright, so that's the camel. The pocket triplane. Rotary engine again. Now, this one is a little bit different again because I've hot glued the connector onto the back of the engine mount so that makes for a nice easy installation but of course I'm, I can't fit 200 milliamp hour battery there it's just too long I think it's going to go anywhere to be honest all right again it just hangs out at the nose slightly that keeps the center of gravity nice and forward okay Beautiful. That makes for a nice, easy um, battery clamp because the the holder is hot glued to the back. Where you do it, of course, is you put your battery on with it in place. A little bit of hot glue to hold it. Take the battery out. And then put more hot glue on to hold it in place. Okay, and my last model, the gorgeous DH2. DH standing for de Havilland, of course. The battery I use for that is 100 milliamp hours. I'll just plug her in lead on this by the way is reasonably long which is on my model anyway so I can just get the battery and I can just tuck it in round the pilot okay and the battery just sits in down the nose like that you could probably squeeze in a 160 which we go I bought the 100s just to fly this one there's no point in using 100s in the other models because it's going to alter the centre of gravity because that's that much smaller, unless it's nose heavy to begin with. Let's try 160. The pilot, by the way, isn't glued in, so it's capable of... If I was to take the pilot out, I could probably squeeze the battery in, but you can see the trouble I'm having. It's The pilot's in the way, really. It's just, I don't fly it. I could modify it so it fitted, but I don't fly it with the pilot. So, uh, sorry, with the bigger battery. So there's no point in modifying it. Oops. So there you are, guys. That's how I fit the batteries in all my Micro Aces models. I hope that's been of some help for you. So, thanks for watching, guys. There's a little Spitfire logo in the corner there. If you want to hit subscribe, and then you won't miss any future videos. If you've got any questions, please ask. And thanks for watching Cliff Harvey, RC Planes. Cheers.